everyone, it's presentation time. So we have made it all the way to the end. We've got some first time sprinters, which is awesome. I don't know if we've got any other second time sprinters. If we do, let's get some, maybe some sunglasses going on. But we are, we've got a jam packed agenda to get everybody going through this. Bethany, you've made it through your first sprint as well. Uh, any kind of like key takeaways as you were seeing people kind of go through this and what you're anticipating from presentations at all? Um, honestly, earlier today, I was thinking about, you know, I, I, I'm really proud of all of you and, you know, regardless of how the next hour, hour, hour and a half goes, um, coming up, I just want all of you to take a minute, pat yourself on the back that you've gone through this process. Um, it's, you know, whether you're doing this for a job or you're doing it through an experience like this, you always learn something new. So whether it's about questions to ask, questions not to ask, um, how to interact and kind of work with others going through this, um, it's always it's always an interesting and new experience, no matter how many times you've done it. So I'm really excited to see what everyone has put together um, and looking forward to it. Awesome. And we do have Azelle here. I'm trying to get her on the stage. Azelle, are we back? Azelle is back. We yes, figured yes. out air meet. Hey, Azelle. So similar, um, Azelle, any, anything as, as you've seen our sprinters go through this? Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm taking a call, as you can see, from the bathroom tonight. <laughs> um, I'm just at a, a work retreat. But yeah, similarly, I'm just very excited to see what everyone has done. And you should all be very, very proud. Um, and I'm so glad to have been part of this journey for you. So. Have fun. Cool. Awesome. Love it. So, um, Niha, I do see that you've gone ahead and raised your hand. Um, not sure if this is you wanting to kick it off. Renu Kadavi, are you guys on the same? Are you on the same? Oh, oh God. Are you guys on the same team, or just something to say? And no, this is just for the presentation. Okay. Perfect. 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 So, Niha, what team are are you on? Just so I know. I am team nine, Shiny Piano. Okay. Uh, and anybody else on your team going to present at the same time? So I'm the only one. Okay, perfect. All right. So we have a lot of teams that we're going to be going through with this. So Ren and Kadevi, we'll let you go second, if that sounds good. Um, we'll definitely fly through this. I'll go through and we'll see what teams are left, but this will make everything quite a bit easier on my end. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> and Niha, we will let you start talking. So. As I said, this is jam packed. Um, we'll give all of our sprinters in their teams five minutes, and then the coaches are going to give about three minutes. And then hopefully, we've got a little bit of time for takeaways if that sounds good. So, all right. Can you share my screen? Can you see my screen? Yep. All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Neha, and I'm here to represent Team Shiny Piano. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Lisa for giving us this opportunity to enhance the services of Splash. Um, after interviewing a few of the sales, for, uh, sales representatives and Lisa, we were able to understand the goals and frustrations of Splash Pool services and were able to develop a business process. Um, we also were able to map the current pain points uh, right now they're having in their system. So today I will address two major pain points. The first one is right at the starting when the web form submission is there the it is going to the main inbox and from there uh, the manager has to manually assign it to all the representatives for this we have a solution in salesforce to automate this process and so i would like to give you a quick demo so whenever a customer let's say cbd and uh, entering the information over here for oh, maintenance service depending on the case reason he selects over here the case directly goes to that queue and we can see it over here we go to that queue which is full oh, maintenance and yeah we have a new case created at this time the representative can pick up the case and start working on it directly. He can mark the status over here. In one screen, he can see the knowledge base and the details of the customer case. 
and also can interact with the customer. He can, um, as you can see that the first email acknowledgement is already sent. For the second pain point, which is when the uh, customer support manager, she does not know how the customer support calls are being handled, how to track web submissions, emails, and the phone calls, what are all the reasons of the cases and the response to the customer's escalation. For that, we have a solution uh, in Salesforce, which is KPI dashboards. And I would like to take you to the dashboard, which we have created. Um, this is the dashboard where a customer support manager can view the case summary in last seven days. As you can see in the first chart, um, the number of cases coming from each source this will help you to improve the channel through which maximum cases are coming here. For example, uh, maximum cases are coming through web. So you can improve on the website depending on the number of cases. Uh, in the middle, as you can see, uh, the performance of each queue and how many average, uh, how much average time does it take to resolve the case in each queue? And uh, this will help in training and feedback of the customer representatives. Uh, in the right hand side uh, chart, you can see uh, the reason why maximum number of customers are contacting Splash. And this will help you in planning the resources as to which queue should have uh, how many number of representatives to solve and uh, rush to work. So, and other charts also have some information like escalated cases in seven days how many new cases, working cases, escalated cases, and also the priority of case reasons. So this is the dashboard we have made for Splash. Uh, this was it. Thank you, everyone. I would welcome your feedback and suggestions. Nice. Great job, Miha. You nailed the timing as well. So Bethany, you want to go first and then Azel second? Oh, great. Um, I just want to say great job. Um, you did a great job being really concise and identifying um, two pain points. Yeah, Niha and team um, really identifying, like getting down to the nut of, well, when we were doing user interviews, that um, really understanding like where um, is this particular person coming from and what would make their job easier. Um, one thing I don't know if I, I didn't know if I saw it, um, when you were saying that the the flow would go like the web to case form, um, was it also identifying like current customers as well? Was that uh, something? Maybe maybe it did include that. I just didn't see it. Um, I know that we had to go kind of fast, so yeah. So it was about okay. only the web submission form right now. Yeah, uh, all the cases coming in through web or email. We have created okay. that system but not for the current uh, existing customers right now, yes. Okay, okay. Um, and then in terms of for the second pain point um, with the KPIs, so um, um, one, it was really great that you were able to show a lot of different, uh, a large number of reports that would show different aspects of representatives. They would be responding to um, cases, emails, things like that. Um, I just, I don't know if I saw where you could show like the representative, like the person that was doing it. So if I had someone that was really slow or really fast, then I could kind of like pinpoint that. But that, that was the only thing that I, I don't remember if I saw it. Maybe I, maybe it was on there though, but yeah. yeah. Other on than the that, that be great job. thank you. Uh, on the dashboard, we just included the queues right now for the performance, uh, mm -hmm. how the queue is doing. Uh, we couldn't um, represent the representatives, yes, but that's a good point. We can add that too. Okay, great. Awesome. And, and Azelle, you want to give some feedback about a minute and then we'll flip orders. Cool, yeah. Just in, um, in addition to what uh, Bethany has shared. So, yeah, once again, great job. Um, I think she's covered that. She's done a great job with capturing a very concise uh, presentation here and showing that to us. 
um, I think just one thing I'd add with the um, the dashboards, perhaps you know, just looking, paying attention to those small small details in the UI. Like I think the content is wonderful, but just like perhaps having the same consistent um, standard with capitalization, the naming of the different components, and so on. It's really silly and small, but it does make a it does have an impact on what it looks like um, to the end user. But great job there, all. Thanks for sharing. Awesome. Miha, Hi. way to kick us off. Great job. All right. So, running Kadevi, let's bring you up on stage. And then let's go ahead and add your teammates as well. Again, yeah. great, great Thank job, you. Miha. Awesome. All right. So Sophia. Sophia Shen. Sof Is it just Sophia? Yeah, Sophia Shen. Perfect. All right, what's your what's your guys' team's name? Classy Pop. Yeah, Classy Pop. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Okay. So the, the floor is yours whenever you're ready. Yes. Can you see the screen? You're good. Yes. Okay. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lisa and your team at Splash Pool Services for our presentation this evening. Oh, Renee, been... we do have something on the top left that has like notes and timer, just so you know, we can see that part. Oh, okay. Okay. You seeing the presenter's note? Yeah. Okay. Oh, fine. So, um, yeah. Um, welcome to the presentation and... Uh, we have designed a solution based on the pain points that we have uh, the, you know, uh, discussed. So um, during our meet uh, with you, uh, Lisa, you mentioned that you had a very disjointed business functionality and uh, no KPI metrics. So we have come up with a, a solution to address your pain points with our case management system. So I would like to introduce my team uh, I, Renuka Devi Kuruva, I'm the business analyst and the team lead here for Classy Pop and Sophia Shen, Bonnie Lim and Sheila Kailamanchili are the business analysts. And the pain points that you had mentioned, uh, let me just summarize, you had no tracking of customer service calls and no tracking of the sub, uh, support to the customers and no metrics to forecast the budget and study the business and no reports to analyze the queries and, uh, and to see the escalations. So what we have implemented is uh, the email to case and the assignment rules and flows and macros that would run and uh, survey forms that would go out of uh, Salesforce to get the feedback from the customers. So this would, Lisa would be uh, the dashboard at a click of a button for you to uh, understand uh, where we stand, where the company stands, uh, the average time it took, takes to resolve the case by type, by the support channel and case by agent and uh, distribution by the channel and uh, time it has taken to resolve and the number of escalations. So I would want now uh, hand it over to Sophia. She will uh, walk you through the solution. Over to you, Sophia. Okay, thank you, Renuka, for the introduction. I'll share the screen. Um, can you guys see it? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so we will be demoing some deliverables that we created to address some major pain points that were brought up during the interview with Lisa. As mentioned, one pain point was that reps were manually assigning themselves cases, causing issues of reps working on the same case unknowingly. So we addressed this issue by implementing the omni-channel feature. Um, quick overview, we are in the Service Console app in the Customer Support Cases queue. This is the queue that the customer reps will be mainly working out of. Um, and the omni-channel feature is down here in the toolbar. It will pop up. and this feature will automatically assign a case to a rep once they're done with working on their existing case. Um, so if I'm a customer rep and I'm finished with my case, then the status is set to available. Then I will be um, notified of this 
um, case to work on. And it's um, organized by priority. So the case detail is here and I'll accept the case. In the details page of the case, we'll see that I'm now the case owner um, versus it was initially owned by the queue. By implementing automatic case assignment, it frees up more time for the reps to just service the customer and not waste time on manual tasks. Another pain point was that Lisa was getting case escalated to her via email, but she was having to shift through all the email to find it. So um, it was a hit or miss whether she would find the escalated case. To address this issue, we created an escalated case queue where the cases would be routed to once they were escalated by the rep. So on this case that I was assigned to as the rep, um, I'm having issues, and so I will escalate this case to Lisa, mark it as escalated. Then we will go into the escalated cases queue, and the case is right here. Um, it's All the escalated cases are in this one list view and organized by priority levels. So with all her escalated cases in one place, Lisa doesn't need to spend hours looking through her email to find them. She can easily get all the cases that, um, she can easily get all the cases that need her attention right away. And the last pain point we wanted to highlight is that Lisa wasn't tracking any metrics, so she had no idea how her team was doing. Uh, we created a dashboard that shows up on Lisa's homepage that shows the metrics that she was interested in um, getting tracked. So going to the homepage, you can see the Splash KPI dashboard and some of the metrics was the average time to resolve case by type, case distribution by support channels, average time to resolve case by agent, case by distribution type. So we can see each metric is illustrated by a chart and each chart, you can easily glean the information at a glance so that she can understand where her team is struggling, where her team is doing well, and which service lines they, they get the most cases. With this information, Lisa can better allocate her people and forecast the budget she needs. That is all for the brief overview of some of Lisa's pain points and now and solutions. And I'm going to bring it over back to um, Renuka for the final takeaways. Yeah, so these are the takeaways from this project. And uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, the uh, you know, coaching that we got and the insights and the challenges we faced. I have listed a couple of them, um, but we I had an excellent team. Uh, it was great working. And I, I'm now I would like to take the feedback from Bethany and Isel. Awesome. Great job, you two. And Renika, Debbie, we, we know we threw you for a wrinkle right in the beginning, and then you just yeah. powered right through. Awesome. Love it. Like, sometimes, honestly, like, that's part of the reason we also do this, too, because that happens at client meetings, and you just powered through, and it was smooth, even if you didn't think it was smooth. Like, honestly, this story still landed. So, um, Izella, do you want to start this time, and then Bethany go second? And again, it's always tough in five minutes. I don't know how you guys do it, and it's a great job. Yeah, sure. I agree. I think it went really well um, and well done for recovering. Uh, a great presentation, great how you introduced yourselves and um, talked through the requirements and, and the solution. I also like the handover between the two of you is very smooth as well. So we can see you practiced. So that's, that's great. Um, great job, guys. Um, for your solution also really beautiful i really liked your use of the kanban feature on the list views that's really a beautiful productivity feature to add and to demo in these sort of things so that was great um i think one thing that i missed when you were talking about omnichannel was talking about the capacity for for agents so you mentioned how a new case would just automatically be assigned, but we didn't speak about the capacity that you can set um, for different agents. So that's maybe something just to keep in mind for the future. And then um, also on the, the dashboard also looks great. Um, one thing that maybe is more of a piece of advice rather than a, a criticism or a comment on anything is keep in mind accessibility um, for people perhaps that um, 
find it difficult to uh, look at lower contrast images and so on um, in dashboards. So don't, you know, you have the ability to have the different background colors for different components, but it can be sometimes a bit disorienting if there's no purpose for it to be either, you know, white or, or dark or so. Um, so just think about that a little bit. And there's also an accessible um, color palette that you can use for dashboards and so on. Um, but yeah, great, great job. Um, and thanks for a great presentation and sharing your learnings with us as well. Thank you, Asif. Thank you. Bethany, All, right. Go for it. All right. So um, I really liked at the beginning, there was a slide that introduced everyone and kind of the role on the team. If you were um, a, a team that was coming in, either consulting or doing an implementation, um, that is really helpful, especially as, you know, me, Lisa, understanding, okay, who who's doing what and understanding and having a little bit more familiarity with like the different players on the team. Um, because I might not have met them all or met them kind of one or, you know, might have been a little bit of time. Um, again, like Izzel said, just to uh, kind of keep the dashboard, just it's not even feedback, just uh, maybe even just like a personal thing of mine, but just keeping the dashboard kind of consistent in, in the colors and the theme, um, just so that my eyes and like drawn to that, like why are the colors different? Is there a reason for it versus just... Yeah, it just is. So um, that would just be the only thing about like the dashboard. Mm -hmm. I thought the variety of reports and charts that you had on there was great. Um, I really liked the use of escalations and kind of keeping all of them where Lisa would need to see them um, and kind of prioritizing for them. So she's not, again, having to go through, you know, all of these emails and cases and trying to you know, pick through, okay, what actually needs my attention, um, as opposed to just, it's been escalated, here it is for me, I can work here, and not have to go to a bunch of different places. So, um, but yeah, great, great job team. And I really enjoyed what you had to, um, what you put forward. Awesome. Thank you, Bethany. And I know, I know it goes so quick in three weeks, for Renika Debbie, Sophia and the team, how did you guys feel about it in the end? Uh, just some quick feedback as it flew by. V did it. V did. did it. <laughs> why we call it a sprint, and it's like a long distance sprint. Yeah, it was. It was uh, exciting. We learned a lot. Uh, we learned to collaborate with um, you know all of them working in a, a different. Uh, I mean, of course, we are in the same uh, same time zone, but still, uh, we somehow made up and met in uh, Google Meet, and we used this Air Table, Air Meet tables, and uh, we somehow made it. Yeah. Well, congratulations. You made it and you finished. Yeah. So um, fantastic you. job, you two. A round of applause, everybody firing through this. So Amit, Thank we you. will, so Sophie and Renika Devi, I will try to remove you guys from the stage. Let's see if I get this right. Let's screw it up. And then, I mean, it was Millie, is that right? Uh, hi, hi, good evening. Uh, uh, I would like to add uh, Billy Tan as well. Yep, just bring her to the stage right now. Right. All, right. All right, the floor is yours whenever you're ready, Amit. Okay. Um... Yeah. Uh, Billy Tan, uh, Yes, can you see the screen? Yep, we can see it. Uh, I mean, you're breaking up a little bit, but we can we can see it. So, so whenever you're ready, the floor is uh, yours. Uh, well, can you hear me? Yep, it is a little bit staticky, so you know. But let's let, let's keep going. We can we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, so you know, all of the offerings and stuff 
qualify your class full team. I mean, you're cutting out pretty bad. Millie, are you able to jump in at all or and share the word for? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, over the period of time, we have uh, came across the user uh, interview with your user, and we have found the kind of the frustrations that you have faced throughout uh, uh, till now, till the time you have handed over your project to us, and uh, we made sure that uh, you won't face any of these things again. Uh, and uh, so based on the user story uh, if we created based on the what and why we came that uh, what all the that we get which we should be preparing. Uh, and I would like to add on to uh, Millie uh, who will be taking you with uh, the KPI dashboard uh, which has been prepared and along with uh, what all pain points we have covered to all those things. So Millie, over to you to look after this. Um, yeah, so we worked on the business uh, process of uh, slash pool uh, case management um, business process. So with this um, business process, this is how um, the cases are uh, are processed at slash pool. And with this, we came out with the pain point. Uh, and one of these is that um, Lisa needs to see the stages of the queue and the um, uh, of the query and in uh, the cases performance uh, within uh, slash slash pool. So with that, I would like to uh, show you the dashboard uh, that we created. Um, so this is a slash pool service a KPIs a dashboard. Um, so on here, you could see that um, uh, case, you can see the cases distributed by um, case reasons, uh, by case types, support channels, and priorities. With all of these, you could see um, the numbers of open and closed cases on here uh, so that Lisa could take a look at this and see where, um, what type of cases and um, support channel like where where um the company the uh we we get the most uh problems with um the uh, services um moving on uh on here we could also this could also see the number of open case status with um statuses of new working and escalated um we also added the um the components uh, in here with for open cases and escalated cases with the numbers uh, showing on here in colored highlighted um, so that um, these I could uh, see and um, know uh, how many cases are open and um, work on it she would like to um, if she would like to um, with that, I would like to over to Amit to go over the business business insights section. Yeah, so the kind of the business insights uh, which we will be able to provide is uh, uh, if we have to the case, the different stages of the case life cycle to track the workload of agents. And uh, we have tried to create the next of transparency in the full complete business process. And uh, we have made sure that the complete life cycle of the full business uh, always remains under the review of the case manager. So that's no point uh, gets skipped. So uh, we have tried uh, all of this efforts uh, without being to make sure that uh, all your frustrated points you know, which we discuss, uh, has been resolved. So yeah, that's uh, what was our challenge and what uh, I think we have uh, fulfilled our and the kind of the deliverables which we are ready to provide is that one on one interaction uh, with staff for better insight, which we did with you. So you can understand the kind of the eagerness and the kind of uh, uh, input we are ready to give you uh, once we handle your project. So uh, that's what uh, we would like to present to you. That's it. Great. You, so, everyone, oh, are, are you guys done, Millie and Amit? Actually, it, 
so we're so we're over time. I do wanna do wanna get through this. And I'm so everybody knows I'm messaging Hobbit, and this is so awesome. He's literally on a boat in the middle of Lake Huron, which is why he's cutting out. But he's trying to power through this and get this done while he's on his job. That is awesome. So <laughs> that is some commitment to trying to get through this. So I just want to say, I mean, it's real hard to hear you, but we're trying to power through in something like that. That is, yeah. So I know Bethany is ill. It's going to be a little bit tough to kind of give feedback, but I just want to like provide that anecdote because that is, that is rad. So um bethany as well for for what you can and i mean i am gonna mute you a little bit and then you know we'd love to even hear a little bit more after this do you want to give some feedback to to millie and the team yeah so uh, again like thank you thank you Amit, for for powering through some some presentations and some circumstances are just going to be like that and you just kind of have to power through and do what you can and um yeah but thank you thank you for doing what you could and um, but yeah, I thought that it was great. You had a really great breakdown from what I could see of the pain points, um, goals, which was really nice to see, um, to see, you know, where, where would Lisa like to be with all of the pain points that she does have? Um, and she had quite a few. So the ability to kind of narrow down and say, okay, what are, what are her goals of where she would like to be? Um, KPIs look great. They were, they were, matching what uh, she would have been looking for of, you know, a number of escalations, um, where are the, you know, number of cases, um, what avenues are they coming from, things like that. Um, yeah, so, but overall looks great. Um, you had your, your, the pain points mapped out and business processes mapped out. Great. So look good for me. Awesome. And is that Uh, yeah, great job, team. Um, so just to add to that, I think you did a great job of ca capturing the pain points as well and translating that into the solution. I think for my side, I'll just add once again a pretty minor comment on just the presentation, but I think one of the key skills of a business analyst is to be able to present to a room of people and also the visualizations or the the artifacts that you use to present is very important. Um, so just on the presentation itself, just maybe have a think about how you do that when you have bodies of text in all caps, it can seem a little aggressive, um, but that's also just minor points. Like I said, also on one side, I think I saw three different fonts, so it's a bit jarring to the eye. So just maybe think about that in terms of how you wanna present things to the user. Um, but like I said, it's, it's pretty minor. It doesn't really affect your understanding of the requirement or the solution, which I think was excellent. Um, in the dashboard, one thing that I did see in the middle component, the case distribution by type, um, there was quite a large distribution of cases that had no, no value there, which might be an indication that either you want to filter out your report to not show that no value option, or um, you want to make that a mandatory field to ensure that someone does choose a type when they create a case. Um, so that's just a data quality issue that you might want to investigate. But otherwise, great job. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for powering through the tough circumstances. Thank you so very much, Bethany, as well. And Jeff, thank you a lot for giving us the opportunity. And thanks a lot, really, for being the awesome teammate. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I'm it. I'm, I hope we get to we get to see you again. Show what you can do again. Get some more practice and even some some better circumstances for you. But again, awesome. You power through. So great job, team. Awesome. 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 All right. So let's go to the next one. We got Marilyn. Come on up. Hello. Okay. Right. Hello. Hi. So let me share my screen. This is the first time I use uh, Canva to present something. So let's see what happens. That's the right attitude for our types of experiences. <laughs> Love it. Um, all righty. Share my screen.
Okay, great. So welcome to team one's presentation for the Salesforce admin and analyst team sprint. You guys are Splash. We are consultants from Clicked, and we're going to be using Salesforce to solve some business processes today that you guys are having. These are the consultants that have been working diligently behind the scenes to get to know more about your business and things that we can do for you. So Alicia, Christy, Nisha, Shamama, Swapna, and I am Marilyn. Um, you are Splash, so you already know a lot of your client details, but you are currently using Salesforce, but more so on the sales side, uh, working with accounts mostly, and we want to move that to the service cloud as well. And so Lisa, you are our project lead. You are the manager of the customer support team. So you and I have been working closely together to gather your requirements and your pain points, which are on the next slide. If it will go, there we go. All right, so your pain points are that right now your process for um, assigning cases to reps is really tedious. You have to read emails, you have to go through all of the text one by one and figure out what kind of case this is, assign it to this person, and it just takes really long time. And then even when the rep does get the case, you don't know what they're working on, how many cases are they working on, where in the process are they with, you know, with that stage, is it resolved, is it not? And then does it need to be escalated? Who knows? So all of this is a huge mystery, which goes into pain point four is that you just don't have any of this data. You have no reports or dashboards, no way to track anything. And then even when cases are finally resolved, you're not getting any customer feedback. So based on the pain points we've made these goals and objectives is pretty much to do the opposite of the pain points let's get some automation for your case assignments let's start tracking cases escalate them if necessary and then gather feedback at the end of the process this is just a visual representation of what i just said so cases come in by phone email or web they get put into the person that handles that department. And again, this is all manual. So this takes a really long time to do. And then the case workers work on the case independently. There's no real communication there. You don't really know what they're doing. And then the case is closed. Ideally, we'd have something that looks like this. You get a customer call in, that still has to be put in manually just because it is on the phone. And so you're typing when they're talking to you. But if it's from an email or web, it'll get you know automatically filled in, mapped into Salesforce, a case is created. Then we'll have um, this Salesforce system assign that case to the appropriate rep. We will know if it's been 24 hours since the case, since when it was open to when it was resolved. If it's more, It'll get escalated to you, Lisa, so that you can give that extra special attention to those cases. Um, if it is less than 24 hours, they'll automatically get the feedback form. But after they've um, the ones that are escalated with you, then it's resolved. Regardless, everyone's still going to get a feedback form, and then that's the end. So this would be the ideal process that we're going for. And how are we going to do that? Um, definitely don't worry about all of the details on these slides, but just so that you know, some features that Salesforce has to solve these issues is, okay, receiving the cases right now and putting them in is a manual process. Salesforce has two great features called email to case and web to case, which pretty much means the customer has typed something to you, whether in an email or in a web form that I know you already have on your website, and it's gonna create the case automatically. You don't have to do anything which is great. So that'll be step one, getting the cases in automatically. Then where are these cases gonna go? Salesforce has something called case assignment rules and we can create different rules that says if it's this kind of case, it'll go to Bob. If it's this kind of case, it'll go to Sally, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all automated. No more pouring through emails anymore, which is awesome. And then, down here, if it does need to get reassigned, and that's reassigned to you, Lisa, as the manager, then we can create some rules for reassigning cases as well. All right, so the whole process has been done. 
Throughout all of this process, Salesforce is tracking all of this data at the same time. This is a dashboard. A dashboard is made up of reports. And so you can see different information on this dashboard that comes from different reports. For example, here is a, re here is a component from a report that shows you how the cases are coming in. So you can see how many cases come in by phone, email, or web. Over here, you can see the number of cases by rep. So just automatically based on this data, you can see that because, you know, this person is getting way too many cases on their plate, that's probably a little bit unreasonable. We got to figure out what's going on there. This person has less on their plate. We need to assign them more. So this is really great to always see um, equity in case assignments. This, you can see the case statuses. These how This is how many cases are escalated, which Again, take that special extra attention from you. The total number of open cases, you don't want to be in the red and have like, you know, 100 open cases. That's, you know, never great for a business. Uh, that means their customer needs are not being met. And then over here is case by reason. Just if you wanted to see the different categories of cases. And so this would all include all important metrics. And that is the end. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Marilyn. Izel, do you want to go first on feedback and then we'll take it over to Bethany? Good job. Sure. Um, thanks so much, Marilyn, for presenting that. I think you have um, just a wonderful conversational um, style of speaking and it was very relatable. So great job. I, I can tell that you've done this before. Um, and so it's a, a great presentation as well as great work for the team. Um, so yeah, I mean, on the process flows, the one thing I would say is that um, I saw that there was one um, element that was manual input. Um, instead of just having the title of what the element is, maybe also just describing what it is. So that would actually have been creating the case uh, or manually inputting the details to the case. Um, so just making sure that the detail is there. Um, but otherwise, you know, I have very little feedback for you. I think you did a great job as a team and also an excellent presentation. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. Great, great. And Bethany? Yeah, like, like as I said, like that, you, you did the um, presentation, the design looked great. Um, obviously, all of the pieces of the, you know, describing the pain points and um, putting together the business process, you know, as it is currently, but then also um, the ideal future state um, is is looked looked great. Um, it was really easy for me to digest. Um, so like like as all like I have I have very little feedback. Like it, I think it looked great and it flowed very well. Thank you, thank you. My team was awesome, and I had six wonderful ladies. So go team one. <laughs> Nice, Marilyn. Marilyn, what's, uh, so speaking, you love speaking, right? What's kind of like your background? Because obviously, like I agree with like Bethany Azell, like it comes off smooth. And I think for people, when you're going through that, like you're telling stories, when you're telling presentations, right? So Marilyn, love, you love presenting? Uh, I wouldn't say I love it, but I've been a teacher. I was a teacher for a long there time. I was an assistant principal. I had to speak in front of yep. the whole schools. Um, now I'm a consultant. I got to speak to clients. Well, I mean, I'm still a baby new consultant, but like, yeah, I've been pretty much public speaking for, for a while. Yep. Our transitioning teachers. Love it. Love it. Love it. Marilyn, great job. Super smooth. And I and think for everybody and uh, as Bethany might even want your feedback, sometimes doing POCs, sometimes not doing POCs, you know, either way can be effective. Right. So the, the risk reward potentially. So. Awesome, great job. So let's go next. We have, let's just put it down. It's Marina, right? Yep, Marina, okay. All right, let me bring you up on stage, Marina. Great job again, Marilyn. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, you're good. Anyone else from your team, Marina, or just um, you today? Yes, I've got um, Junel Mastalieva. I believe that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> And they'll be presenting with you today. How do you how do you spell it? G U N E L. Oh, okay. Good news with you. All right, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen though. Perfect.
Well, there you are. Okay. <laughs> We're back in the matrix. We, we are. <laughs> so we are uh, team eight. We are clickbait. Are you ready for me? I, I, I have to say before you go on, I love the name. So. <laughs> oh, thank I you. This, I, I saw this. I saw this happen in like one of the forums, and I definitely a big chuckle. So, <laughs> um, is yours when you're ready. we have a very creative teammate. Um, we'll start off with um, a recap of uh, the splash um, pool um, business lines. Uh, you have a swim lesson school, lifeguard training, and certification. Uh, pool member management software and new pool consulting and pool maintenance services. Um, the frustrations that uh, we heard from you were that you had an outdated system, which is inefficient. Um, you use manual case routing, which is time consuming for you. That cases are left unresolved for more than 24 hours. Uh, management is unable to define case volume and that you don't have centralized data tracking. Uh, the goals uh, are to provide seamless and timely customer support, to automate customer query assignments, uh, to create reports to show insights on case progress, measure customer satisfaction, and track agent performance. The two business insights that informed our work on this project were user stories. Uh, the first one, as you can see, customer support manager. As a customer support manager, I want to log all cases in a central location, regardless of case origin, so that I can track cases through the entire life cycle. Uh, the user acceptance criteria show all customer inquiries in one database and show a status for each case at all times. The second one, as a customer support manager, I want to find cases that need urgency to resolve so that I can provide better customer service. The user acceptance criteria for this was to assign cases by priority level and urgency. And now I'd like it to hand it off to uh, Junel uh, to go over some deliverables. Hello. Thank you, Marina. Um, how can I share my screen? Can you try again? Just a minute. Okay. Share screen. Sorry. Um, there is something problem. I cannot share. Okay, I'll like share it again and yeah, and walk you through it. Are you ready? Yeah. Um, thank you, Marina. Just can you just make it a bit bigger? Thank you. Um, from our just user interviews, we gained some insight and created this um, business process map. And here we would like to uh, talk uh, briefly about uh, how the cases are um, uh, routed. First, the customer case inquiry is received from the website, form, email, or process uh, from the phone or WhatsApp. Then the cases are routed, to, uh, routed manually to the different product lines. Then the, uh, these product lines are swim um, schools, community pools, consulting services, and also lifeguard certifications. And then agents could be able to look at the library of the reference documents or PDFs in order to solve the cases. If the cases are solved, it will be resolved and closed. If not, uh, the uh, cases will be escalated to the uh, assigned person, and this assigned person is a, a custom support manager. If she will be able to resolve the case, the um, cases will be resolved and closed. And from this business process map, we gained some pain points. Um, the pain points are the following. Uh, manual case assignment in, is time consuming, poor case escalation process, no case metrics determined, reference PDF files should be easily accessed, no customer feedback after case resolved, and no insights on case volumes. And after this, we decided to create the um, data uh, on the service console. Uh, these are all the open cases that have case number, contact name, subject, status, priority, date, time, ultimate. The, some, the, some of the subjects are license renewable, timeline of swim lessons, maintenance issue, and so on. And status can be working, new, or escalated. And the level, uh, priority level can be high, low, or medium. Um, this is the table format. And then we have the... 
uh, from the different channels such as phone, email, and web. Um, then next one, we have um, closed cases. And according to our data, we decided to create this dashboard. Um, and in this dashboard, we can easily see that uh, they have um, they spend too much time uh, on resolving the cases, such as the unresolved cases uh, per day in 39, and per week is only three, and per the 24 hour just oh, they only can um, solve only one case. And also, we decided to uh, classify the cases by its status, by its priority, by its uh, type, and also by its origin and the average time that the agents spend to resolve the case and open cases by reps. And from this insight, we understand that they need um, automation on their system, especially in service console. And we decided to create this uh, uh, on the service console, such as email to case. And another form is web to case. And um, next, um, uh, I think Marina will hand take. Marina, can you just? Um, yes. So in conclusion, we know that our client wants uh, to implement uh, Salesforce Cloud uh, for case management. Uh, we recommend email and web to case automation, omni-channel for automatic case routing, uh, case record types for each line of business, uh, Salesforce knowledge base uh, for reference documentation, and Salesforce feedback management for tracking survey responses. Um, and then we'd like to just touch on some key takeaways. Uh, we have a better understanding of the business anal analyst role in consulting process and insight into the purpose and proper use of the different discovery tools. Uh, our challenges with uh, co first coordinating schedules, uh, we worked um, on Slack uh, to configure this and uh, on shareable documents. Uh, the second one would be selecting work to be presented and we had a rating system that helped us select that. And that concludes our presentation. I want to thank you for your time on behalf of myself and my team and invite you to share your feedback with us. Thank you. Great job, great job, great job. Loved it. Uh, Bethany, do you want to kick off feedback? Click debate. Uh, sure. Yeah. So I thought that um, your presentation and your story, it was just, it was laid out very well with the pain points and the goals. Um, it told a story that was really easy for me to follow and understand kind of where you were going. Um, one thing I do want to note is that I really appreciated, I, I want to say this might have been the first one, the acknowledgement of the knowledge base for the like centralized uh, repo of knowledge. Um, I really appreciated that that piece of it. Um, but overall, great job and uh, great job presenting. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. And Adele? Uh, yeah, great job. Um, very clear and concise presentation. You hit all the, the topics. Also love the name. Um, and it was a very um, well communicated presentation as well. Um, just with the knowledge base as well, I noted that just wanted to add on that using maybe a missed opportunity in using Salesforce knowledge. I don't know if that was implied in the solution, but that is maybe something that you could consider if you didn't already. Um, and yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So Marina and Janelle, what was kind of the outside of the team communications, what was kind of like your guys or your biggest takeaway, I guess, at the end? that you are gonna be like, this helped me a ton, or this was one of the biggest challenges. I know you kind of laid it out, but anything like really sticking as you went through these three weeks? For me, communication was key. Um, and it was a little difficult with schedules, but uh, just utilizing all the t tools available, Slack was really our number one, um, just private messaging each other and just being receptive to each other's ideas. I think that's what really helped us get through it. Yeah, same. Just we discussed, and it really helped me to understand the concept, and we worked together. It was very cool. Thank you. Awesome. Great, great, great. That's why we did the teams, right? Awesome. So great right. job, everybody. Thank you for um, this opportunity to appreciate it. Of course. We also. Thank we'll, you. We'll, we'll be here for a while, so come on back and do some more. Practice. I might. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> cool. Awesome. So Oleg. You are up next. Thanks again. Clickbait. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job.
Hi guys, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. All right, I'm presenting from the T7 resulting team. And let me a second to share my screen. So what I want to do today, I want to share with you our current progress on the project. And Good. I would like to start from the web form. Can you see my screen? Yep, you're good. Yes. Okay, great. So currently when somebody um, somebody submits a form, so what we have now, the case will be automatically created in their Salesforce. And um, yes, here the, the new case created and also new case will be automatically assigned. Currently, we set it up to assign the, the new cases to their uh, queues and um, later, when we add the agent to the Salesforce, it will it can be assigned to a specific agent, or agents can be added to the queues. Also, their email will be sent to their customer as an acknowledgement. So here, let's see if their email will be there. Uh, yes, I think that one so this is the acknowledgement email but what if their customer want to um send us an email and uh email us with with the problem then we also set it up their email to case so what happens that uh emails automatically convert it into cases in salesforce as well so this is an example of this case. So this is their test. I send their email and then this email converted to, to the case. And now what happens is that the agent can communicate exactly from, from this case, communicate and send emails from Salesforce, which is great and saves a lot of time for their agents. Um, the second part, I would like to share you share the dashboard that we created based on their user stories. And today I would like to specifically highlight three, three of the user stories. First one will be to track what cases are taking too long to resolve. And here we have a table, cases that are open for more than two days. This is all cases that are taking too long to resolve. The second one will be see trends on cases by type. And again, we have a trending chart with the cases. And we have similar trend for case reasons. And the third is the system to track where cases come from. And we have a donut chart here, cases by origin. So this is their overview of their changes that are already implemented. And I would like to hear some feedback. How do you, how do you like the current changes? And if there's something else, awesome. thank Thanks, you. Oleg. So Bethany, do you want to go first on this one? Uh, sure. Sorry about that. I wasn't unmuted. Um, yeah. So obviously, I mean, I, I appreciated that you kind of started from the demo perspective. You can kind of see throughout. Um, various folks' presentations that sometimes, you know, you start with a demo or you don't start with the demo. Um, so obviously, you know, you, you have all of the pieces and you have an understanding, I think, of Lisa and her team of the goals and, and the pieces that would, um, that would accomplish what she would need and what she's looking for. Um, I just, I think it would be helpful for me as Lisa to maybe have something um, like a little bit of a presentation or a little bit more of a, a little bit of a flow to um, understand kind of the, the start, the beginning, or I'm, I'm sorry, the beginning, the middle, the end 
Okay. Um, but yeah, but I think that, like, you I mean, you had all of the pieces there, all of the different um, solutions that would have accomplished it. Um, that just, for me personally, would have made it um, just a little bit easier to follow. Okay, thank you. Here we go. Uh, yeah, just um, I'm grateful for your presentation and the ability to also show um, a couple of different options and solutions. So in addition to the the web to case that is common amongst many of the presentations that we've seen, you also offer an alternative email to case. Um, and I really like the end to end view of the solution. So also just bringing up your mailbox and, and showing, you know, the email that you've received um, can sometimes be quite powerful in these sorts of presentations when um, people can see these things for themselves. And um, yeah, nothing else in addition to add to Bethany. Um, thanks for sharing your presentation with us. Thank you. Awesome. Great job, Oleg. So uh, yeah, uh, any kind of key takeaways for you, Oleg, going through this? Like obviously it was pretty robust from, from a tech perspective, but any hangups that you had as you were going through it? Uh, do you mean overall on the project? Yeah. Um, no, th that's actually been great to work with the team. There was a lot of teamwork, and yeah, and in this week we've been we had meetings almost every day, and that was fun. Awesome, good stuff, good stuff. Fun is key. Awesome, Ola, great job, really yeah. robust POC and demo for sure. So Claire, certainly last but not least. Ready Hi. to take us home. <laughs> sure. Um, let me share my screen. I apologize in advance for the background noise. I have a sure. seven Bethany's month old. Bethany's got a kid. Mine's screaming and at the top. And four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of parents on the, on the right now. Can you see my screen? Yep. All right. So um, we are team four, Borderless Consulting, and part of our team were Elizabeth Adesanya, Alkin Savik, Mika Jackson, and Animesh Rodera. Um, over the past few weeks, so we've been over uh, uh, the pain points of Splash Pool and um, the issues that Lisa, the customer service manager, was having. So today in the agenda, we'll be going over some of the service manager KPI dashboard and also we'll do a demo of the email to case creation. Um, as mentioned, so some of the pain points that um, we've discovered uh, doing um, initial discovery session was um, that Lisa was not able to see uh, what what the agents were were working on, what their case load were was, and also um, when a, a case needed to be escalated, and also how many uh, cases each agent were receiving per or product line, or also based on the different departments. Um, I have next, so do we have created a dashboard um, that will, uh, it's the KPI dashboard for the service manager and it will show the different case, so the case status for um, that they've received, how many they have that are new, how many they have closed, and that way that had, that will help um, Lisa knowing on, um, what what exactly her team's um, working on? What their caseloads um, is throughout throughout the week? We can also change this change this to show by month as well. And also, in over here we we had the um, for different processes or the departments. What what um, how many cases they received for each, and how many um, right here we have how many cases per owner, and and also how many we have escalated by the different departments. Over here is a list of the, uh, the different cases that are open and just to get an overview um, of that. So just 
to look more into this area to show the total cases by status and the process areas. Um, and I mentioned earlier for showcasing um, how many are escalated by owners. Um, that way, Lisa would know which of her agent maybe she would need to give a little bit more more training, um, and also based on the caseload per areas to know how to maybe um, add more based on the team size um, for for the departments that uh, they are working on. Um, we also created a, a list view for the different cases um, in Salesforce so that it can she can have an idea of what's what's in the what's in the queue and also which one of them were escalated or not. Um, this is um, just a brief overview before I go into the actual demo demo for the uh, email to case. So they will go uh, the customer will go on the splash pool website this is for the web to case form where they fill out the the information. They enter their email, phone, and they include the message um, in the support email of Splash. Well, they will receive that, but this is it's also creating a case in Salesforce where they will be able to track it. So now I'll go and show you how the customer will go about creating the, sending the case via email and what is seen on the Salesforce side. So just to save on time, I already started out the email. So I'm a customer. I put in the email for a splash pool customer service. I put a subject what what is about and also enter um, my name and my, what I email, phone number, and what exactly I need. In this case, they need the pool filter um, to be serviced. And then I'll click on, oh, let me move that a bit, click on send. And on Splashful, and we'll receive the email. Uh, right I think it was sent. Yes, and you receive it right here in the email, the Splashful email. Um, but then in Salesforce, they also see it, see it here. Let me refresh the page. So this is the case that I just created, and uh, the as the customer was sent, they will receive it here within the list, and the um, agent will click on it and as soon as they do they um they will be automatically assigned as the case owner um i'm i mean as i'm logged in here as um animesh my other teammate that's why uh he was assigned the case um but then from there you know we'll have the status and exactly what the customer needed um to be done and we'll be able to manage from there. And this is the dashboard that I went over a few minutes ago um, to see um, the different statuses for the cases, the departments, and also um, where Lisa will be able to help some um, of her team members. Um, that will be all for today. And thank you. Awesome. Great job, Claire. Uh, Isel, do you want to do you want to give feedback first? Sure, thanks, Jeff. Um, great job, team. Uh, very well put together. Great presentation. Clear end-to-end -end processes that you're showing us. So I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, maybe one thing that you can consider in the future is just also, you know, with this type of solution, how would you manage duplicates as well? And you can incorporate that um, into your presentation. So in case um, there is a case submission via a web form, how would you, um, like Bethany previously said, also attach that to existing contacts um, and, and not create new contacts in the system? So that's maybe something to just think about. Uh, that I didn't see explicitly mentioned in the presentation, but it, it looked great and um, yeah, great job. 
Okay. All right. Noted. Thank you. All right. So, um, yeah, again, great job. Great demo to kind of show from beginning to end, email to case, um, what exactly that would look like when it comes to um, the, di you know, the different views or, you know, as a manager, what am I going to see when that piece of information comes through um, that, you know, at the, at the end of the day, a manager, they're going to want to know, okay, well, you know, if you say it does this, I, I want to know what it actually is going to look like. And is this going to work for me? So um, from a manager's perspective or someone who's actually going to be using it, um, I think that would be really, really helpful for me. Um, just one tiny, tiny tweak. Um, I, when it comes to list views, sometimes if you include too many columns in there, they get, become super skinny. So sometimes with list, uh, list views, um, less is more. So that would just be the only thing if they were just a little, little too skinny. So that was the only thing though. Great job, Claire and team. Thank you. Hey, Claire, great job. You made it. <laughs> Did it feel like a sprint or a, or a sprinting marathon for you and the team? Uh, a sprinting marathon, I would say. <laughs> um, I mean, we within the team, we come with at different levels and experience. I mean, some of the team, they're already consultants working in the field. So they have the experience in other people, such as myself, transitioning into the Salesforce ecosystem. So it was a great learning experience because um, I definitely had... Um, on this end, you know, as part of a project, I've worked on project before, but not not from a BA perspective, and that was definitely a great learning experience in in going through, you know, the interviews, you creating the user stories. So I truly uh, did get a lot of knowledge and appreciated and having the opportunity to go through that. Awesome. Love it. Right. You get to learn from everybody. We had 33, 34 people join the session. Everybody is here, still here. So learning <laughs> from each other. So Claire, great job. Great job to you and your team. All right. I, I lied though. Giorgio is coming to take the reins to take us home. Claire, awesome, awesome, awesome to you and your team. <laughs> Thank you. You got it. All right. One more. And then I got to go put my baby to bed. <laughs> Giorgio, take us home. Awesome. Uh, can you guys hear me well? Yep. Awesome. Uh, let me check. All right. Can you guys see my screen? You guys see my screen? Yes, awesome. we can. Thank you. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're Team The Incredibles. Our team leader, it's uh, Jenny Flicker. Uh, then we have Keith Johnson, Tarvin Kaur, Gunit Saini, Hatisun Misser, and me, Georgia Montenegro speaking. And here we have uh, Splash Services uh, customer support process uh, from start to finish. And first, uh, customer calls or fills a website form or WhatsApp inquiring about something, then this uh, is handled by a front desk manager that chooses uh, to which department this uh, inquiry will go to. And after that, we have an, another process where if a case is resolved in 24 hours, then the case is closed. If not, it will be escalated to Lisa. And uh, then the last process is uh, if the case is resolved in 30 days, uh, before 30 days, I'm sorry, then it's, it's, this, the case is closed. If not, it is escalated to the executive team so they can close it. Uh, here we have uh, Lisa Cervantes. A um, couple of uh, her job responsibilities uh, will lead a team of uh, customer support specialists to ensure that clients receive assistance with the technical aspects of uh, Splash and also improve the profitability of Splash through customer retention. And a couple of her frustrations, uh, she has no visibility about the type of number of uh, incoming cases and uh, no process for escalating cases and no standard way for uh, prioritizing cases. And 
the goals that she has is, uh, well, she needs uh, to centralize the incoming ticketing system for uh, support cases, an auto assignment of these cases to the appropriate uh, teams or departments, and a tracking system, a reporting system, and a timely resolution of these cases. Now, uh, the two business insights that inform our work on this project. First, uh, we saw that there was a strong need for a centralized system to lock the number of uh, cases coming in. Since Lisa inherited a very outdated system when she took her role as a manager for Splash, we decided as a team that this was uh, of utmost importance to make sure that Splash can provide a, uh, you know, a seamless experience for their customers. And also that there was a need to identify ways to segregate cases uh, by age, meaning that uh, Lisa should know how many hours a case has been opened so that she can escalate the cases that have been opened uh, longer than usual so she can um, close those cases. And for deliverables, uh, we were trying to be very succinct with the presentation, so we just uh, decided to tie in uh, one report per uh, user story for so for this one, uh, as a customer support manager, uh, I, Lisa, want to see how many uh, hours the case has been open so that I can escalate the cases to me if it has not been resolved within 24 hours. And we decided to choose uh, this report so she can see uh, the case ID, the type of service that was requested by uh, the customer, and the age, which is in hours. And now for the second one, uh, we chose that as a customer support manager, I want to have access to a call log so that I can manage the customer support department workflow. And here we have uh, the report on the left, so she can see the case distribution by the support channels, uh, so phone or web. And also she can see the workload uh, of all of her team in the different departments, so pool maintenance, uh, pool cons uh, construction consultation, software, or community partnerships. And all of these uh, reports uh, we can see in a dashboard here that we created. So she can see uh, the count of uh, open cases, uh, the cases closed uh, month to date, uh, also the case resolution time uh, by priority. So if it's critical, high, medium, or low. And um, Next, uh, well, for our takeaways for this project is that uh, the more information you can get prior to discovery, the better, because it will allow the team to ask more directed and productive questions to the stakeholders and uh, not having as many uh, discovery sessions uh, as possible. So you can uh, have a, a very uh, good workload on your hands. And the other one was that having access to the end user is critical. Managers can only tell you so much on their perception of what happens on a day-to-day -day basis and how systems are used may not be as accurate as uh, what's uh, happening in real life. The challenges that we have is, uh, well, trying to fill in the blanks with the limited access to the manager and no access to the departmental end users and also no access to the current individual departmental processes. Uh, yeah, we thought that uh, if we had uh, more access to the departmental processes, maybe we were able to help them out uh, to either better those processes or creating a, a new process from start to finish. And a question that we have uh, for you guys, uh, coaches, uh, any tips about uh, keeping everybody motivated during the, the discovery process and throughout the rest of uh, the life cycle? So, uh, the discovery process is not just a uh, question, answer, question, answer. And yeah, that's it for uh, Team Big Credibles. Thank you. Awesome, great. So Bethany, do you want to actually tackle that question and then give feedback at all? I, I, I love that you ended with a question, <laughs> George. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was, that's, that's a great question because that's, yeah. I think really always, even if everyone is on board, there's always, you know, how, how do you keep people engaged or moving through um, what can sometimes, sometimes it's exciting, but other times it can be kind of a slog of questions and getting down, boiled down into the weeds. So um, what I found is really helpful is um, having, if you have maybe like a day or two where you're doing a lot of user interviews, 
um, some, as, as silly as it sounds, doing something afterwards with those particular folks to build a little bit more connection um, to have outside of um, outside of just those sessions sometimes really helps um, for people to come back and feel a little bit more rejuvenated or rested. Um, but then also just understanding, you know, keeping keeping folks on um, a little bit of, of a tight schedule sometimes can help people feel like, okay, this isn't going to go on for days and weeks and months of never ending um, discovery. Um, so that's why it's super important to have kind of your questions buttoned up and concise um, and really uh, flowing well for people to feel like, okay, I don't have whiplash from questions being asked or, you know, I, I don't really know where they're going or this is too much in the weeds. So um, a couple of couple of tips that I found, but, um, you know, it's, it's always a challenge, but it, done right discoveries can be really, really fun. Thank you, Ethan. All right. And then just some uh, just some feedback for uh, for your presentations. I really enjoyed and appreciated the pro support process map um, that I really enjoyed how that was laid out. Um, and then, you know, your points at the end about just getting more access to, or even any access to an end user. I apologize. That's my son in the background. Uh, he agrees with me. Um, but, uh, you know, just getting access to end users and then also getting more information um, as um, to just get a really true, complete picture. Um, because really managers, they can give you input from their perspective. However, some, you know, someone in their department, even from within the different kind of focuses, you know, the pool maintenance or the community connection, like those those different connections or different departments within her department might have different um, different points of view. So, but overall, great job. I really appreciated how this was laid out. Awesome. Thank you. Love it. And Azelle? Yeah, thanks. Um, um, thanks for sharing. Uh, great job, team. Um, it's so exciting to see all the presentations and see everything happen. Um, no other feedback from me. Just really like your processes. This was concise. Um, the muted colors also is just a small piece of feedback, but I saw it as a couple of teams as well. Um, a lot of bright colors, um, like Bethany also mentioned. Sometimes if um, there's no reason for a specific color, why an object, you know, it could be on a dashboard, it could be in the, the actual um, process that you're showing that it is um, a specific color um, or drawing your attention to it, it can be a bit distracting. So I liked um, in your sense that it was um, quite neutral um, and muted. And um, the rest of your work looks great. Thanks. Awesome. Yep, and for my end, whenever I can, you know, presentations very much about storytelling in Giorgio, I could follow it from beginning to end. And this is obviously not my area of expertise. <laughs> So um, great job, great job, everyone. We've seen so many of these and every single time I'm kind of in shock <laughs> with how much everyone can do in three weeks and would love to kick it over to Bethany and Azelle. Any just kind of like final thoughts and feedback before we wrap up the sprint marathon <laughs> that these sprinters have just been on? <laughs> Yeah, so just a, a couple of uh, points at the end. So just, again, I, I mentioned this in the beginning, but I'm just, I'm really proud of everyone, what they were able to do. I, I can't believe it's only three weeks that you were able to do this. I mean, I know people, they have jobs, they have families, they have school, they have outside um, obligations on their time. And so for for folks to come in and just be really willing to work with people that they've never met before. And, um, you know, that that's really impressive. Um, I really appreciate that, you know, everyone, they attended the sessions and were really engaged and getting the most that they could out of, um, out of the, the different um, sessions. Um, you know, the, the experience and energy that everyone brought into this entire process is really inspiring. Um, and I, I really hope that everyone, 
um, was able to pull at least something um, from this experience um, that you feel like you learned. So awesome. Love it. And I love the word inspired. We totally are. So Izel, any any thoughts? Yeah, I'm um, just adding to that. So super impressed with everyone. Um, if I think back to my own you know, journey in the Salesforce world and as an analyst specifically way back when, um, it looked nothing like this. So I'm very <laughs> glad to see the, the accelerated learning and really quick grasping of these different concepts and, and different functions that you'll you'll have to um, implement in a day-to-day, -day, whether you're an analyst or an admin. Uh, so I think it's a great opportunity and I really appreciate everyone kind of seizing it and working together. And um, I think just meeting someone from somewhere across the globe and working together is always a wonderful opportunity. So um, thanks for, for sharing your work with us. Yep, for sure. And thank you, coaches, sprinters, you've made it. We make this hard intentionally, and if you made it to the end, you should feel so proud. And Azel, Bethany, to our other coaches that aren't here for the final presentations, thank you so much for continuing to share your knowledge with our sprinters as they continue to progress in their careers. And I hope everybody was able to take up some pieces like Azel and Bethany had. And again, everybody should feel so accomplished for getting through this in three weeks. Just incredible. We're so excited. We're inspired. I love that word, Bethany, because every day you guys do this, you just have us wake up and want us to do it even more to support everybody on your journey. So thank you, coaches. Thank you, sprinters. That is a wrap. And there are instructions to get your certificate. Please make sure you're submitting stuff so that we can get your certificate. If you want to share that on LinkedIn? Great. Please connect with your coaches on LinkedIn as well. And again, we're here to support you on your journey. And thank you so much. And again, just amazing job. So thrilled. So. And that's a wrap. Take care, everybody. Bye.